Hi everyone, me again, Doris Raymond from The Way We Wore in Los Angeles. We wanted to do an episode on red carpet dressing, uh, just kind of as a nostalgic thing for us because we don't think we're going to get much call for that this year. And we were looking at what we had plenty of in stock so we could do a good uh, representation of the topic. And one of the uh, really prolific designers in the 70s and 80s for red carpet uh, was Arnold Scazzi. He, his real name was Arnold Isaacs. Uh, he's from Canada and decided to change his name by reversing the letters in his last name because Scazzi sounds Italia. And in the clothing world, that he felt that that would give him a little bit more of an advantage. So Scazzi started off, you know, we, we don't realize what an impact we have on people when they're young. When he was a child, he had um, an anti-mame character, Aunt Ida, who lived in Australia, who encouraged his uh, designing traits, and she was a lover of Scaparelli and Chanel, I believe she had couture pieces. So he was greatly influenced by her, and I believe she helped him go to design school in France. He went to the Chambre Syndicale and wanted, he wanted to uh, work with Christian Dior, but getting him in took too long, and so Dior encouraged him to go to New York, which he did. Um, when he got to New York, he actually worked for Charles James, for a short while, and in the late 50s, early 60s, he just decided to start his own company. What was great about Scazzi was, uh, because of his background working with Charles James, he had a couturier, couturier's sensibility, but he also appreciated the value of surface design, like beading and feathers and paillettes and all sorts of things. So he became the go-to person for New York society, for a lot of celebrities, and for those of you that remember Barbara Streisand accepting her Oscar in 1968 or 69, she wore this unbelievable sheer pantsuit, and the pants were like huge bells and that was designed by Scazzi. So what we pulled are um, things that are heavily embellished, things that are loud prints, because he loved color. And on the mannequin, this is a really beautiful cut. The dart on this is really beautiful. It's a French dart. Um, with an unusual color uh, blocking, I'll call it, between the turquoise and the coral beads. Um, and it's done on, looks like a rayon crepe. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful gown in really nice condition. And the beauty of wearing something like this on the red carpet is I would say you can be 99.999999% sure nobody else will be wearing this. And then on this side, this is uh, the bling dress. It's an Aurora Borealis uh, rhinestones uh, prong set in a fabric that is called souffle. It's a fabric that uh, Bob Mackie liked to use because it creates the illusion of nudity. And um, this dress is divine. Uh, on the rack, we have a few of his cocktail dresses. Talk about an explosion of color. This strapless with kind of a bubble peplum. And uh, it's in beautiful condition. And I think that this is the kind of thing that, da it's dated, but it doesn't go out of style. And then for the holidays, for those of you that like polka dots, is this cotton velveteen with uh, embroidered dots that um, 
multicolor, and it's got a beautiful scoop neck and these puffy 80s style sleeves with tool on the inside to make it stick out even more. Drop waist with a flounce on the bottom hem. And then his choice of fabrics and surface design, bar none. This is an embroidered organza with black uh, flat back crystals inset. What I love about this is the decolletage and the twisted gathering in the waist bust area, but it's flat in the, ba flat in the back. Definitely 80s. This strapless with a scalloped bodice. Sequins in a paisley pattern and it's a nice matte jersey so it moves beautifully. Okay, and then this monastic dress, which reminds me of a Norel that I had a while ago. It's a silk gazar with an organdy um, flutter back. And it is not strapless. It has this kind of anchor for the shoulder, but it's very monastic, and it's a straight beautiful fabric and it's you know he said he's not a minimalist but I would argue with him looking at this dress and then this confection reminds me of an oversweet wedding cake too much sugar but it's this beautiful blue tiered lace flouncy strapless gown. Uh, this reminds me of Dynasty. <laughs> For those of you old enough to remember that. And of all the Scazi pieces that I have, this is actually my favorite. It's a lame animal stripe uh, sheath that has a tulip hem. So there's, it's easy to walk around in. Uh, the print is classic. And then the best part is it has its own fringed shawl lined in red. So this is one to wear when you want to have a lot of attention. I, I, when I see a piece like this, I wonder who the original owner was. And this all-over sequined strapless gown is definitely not minimalist. What he did was he sequined over the print, and it's a straight strapless sheath. Very sexy, very bodycon. Uh, it's a bombshell dress. And then here comes another wedding cake, but in black. This is off the shoulders. It makes me think of the Civil War. Um, ruched bodice, tiered kind of peplum. And it's a flocked tulle, which is an interesting fabric. The construction, because it's actually a pretty heavy dress. Uh, is there boning on the inside? A little bit of boning to hold the boobies up. And yeah, another super sweet wedding cake. I would imagine that the icing on this one is licorice. And the last Scazi gown that we have is actually one of the prettiest fabrics. It's um, a lace that has peekaboo areas. Um, so it, inter it mixes tool with lace, strapless uh, empire waist, and enough of a A-line on the skirt that you can dance the night away and not 
should not be restricted by the cut of the dress. The 1980s gives us silhouettes that you either love or hate. Uh, I see photographs of myself with what look like football <laughs> shelters. And I have to say, I'm not a big fan of that. But the thing about Scazi is his pieces are classic. And if you look through fashion magazines today, you'll see a lot of designers that emulate his aesthetic. So he lives on in today's world. Um, I want to say how absolutely positively thrilled I am that we have this community of almost 50,000 subscribers. So thank you very much. And in honor of that uh, milestone, we want to do something different. And that is we're going to ask you to email photographs of yourself excuse me, wearing um, pieces that you purchased from the way we wore and with any comments that you want to add and uh, around the time we hit 50,000 we will do a special uh, episode uh, honoring our customers and pieces from the past. So as always, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up uh, and uh, Whatever comments you want to say, we try to address the ones that need immediate attention. And we appreciate your interest. Please subscribe, because that really makes a difference in the logarithms and suggestions, and is probably what has um, accelerated our uh, viewership. So know that I'm grateful, and I'm wishing you all good health, joy, and safety. And that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.